This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. You are what you watch. Hello, my name is Harrington Watko. Welcome to our program. Last week, when I was trying to figure out what exactly or who exactly I'm going to invite into the show, I decided to just call on them directly rather than try and force a topic, like some of us seem to want to force things around town. Going back to that issue, so I called on attorney Manny Luna because I read his name all the time and he's always in the newspapers and that was because of the com elector basically smart magic and then I came across governor uh, Bono Daza who la just last week launched together with uh, with one of our hosts here in TV Kamentong together with a slew of people if I'm not mistaken together even with Joe Romero and they went and uh, they filed a complaint of treason against the president now when they came this morning in the studio, we decided what exactly is the topic we're going to tackle. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a problem when it comes to this issue, simply because current events have seemed to have taken another form, an animal that, seem, that you cannot seem to tackle or tame. What exactly is important? What is the priority you and I are facing? Let's try to enumerate just some. Let's see the BBL that we all don't like, the columnists that keep trying to criticize the president, rufusing it right after what's happened in Congress. What else? The 1.2 billion that was spent mischievously by no less than the DND, the, the Department of National Defense, on helicopters that can't fly. And as of late, as of this morning only, the 2.2, 2.3 billion for the fire trucks, which are way overpriced, way above the lowest bid that was put together. Is this the matuwid na daan? But hang on, we have so much more. We've got the Comelec. We've got the elections upcoming. We've got the, let's see, the word war between Duterte and uh, De Lima, who are fighting it out. One is maybe trying to get into the news, and the other one trying to stay in the news, because both obviously wanted to go for higher positions. What exactly is our priority? Let's look at China. America's going to bomb China. Is it all about China? Is it even all about Saba? Or isn't it all about the U.S. and the creeping, let's see, interests that keep, that actually will see Mindanao for us? I have blamed Saba. I have blamed the Malaysians. I blame the terrorists called the MILF. But is it them that really caused the seeding of Mindanao and to create the BBL? Is it they that pursue the pockets of our politicians to push them to give not only Mindanao but its natural resources. But wasn't it America who blew up the Yugoslavian Balkan states only to find out that they are back to where they miserably were to begin with? Ladies and gentlemen, these current events seem to overtake us and some of them we seem to be able to tackle. If you read the columnists and all the major dailies, I'd like to read something about what good this government is doing, simply because I'd like to follow the reforms he keeps harping on. But hang on, maybe the mother of Mar will have a better idea and cue. So maybe would his, her, his, his wife. Or maybe the others would do the same. Or the American citizenship of Po. Or Laxon trying to come on as president. Why even have an election? when, to begin with, the Venezuelans already make that election and choose for us. Ladies and gentlemen, with us on the show, we've got, like I said, 
We have Attorney Manny Luna and we've got Governor Bono Dasa. Gentlemen, maraming salamat for being here. I'm sorry I'm a bit sarcastic for that opening statement. No? Pero lahat na sinabi ko dun, di ba? Lahat ng... Yeah. Binira mo, Attorney Luna, kayo muna. Binira yes. mo ang, sa, sa Supreme Court, no less, at nanalo ka. That's Pinigil correct. mo ang Smartmatic sa kakaguluhan ng 268 plus million pagdating sa refurbishment ng mga Picos machines. Yeah. Where is that now? Because I'd like to see those machines burned. Yeah, the machines are still there, the more than 81,000 machines. And we know for a fact that Comelec is planning to, to award a new contract for the refurbishment, diagnosis, and repair of such machines. However, they have, they have a second option, which is also to bid out the award mm -hmm. of another lease contract for about 70,000 plus 23,000 Picos machines. So it seems that Comelec is not running out of excuses uh, for its decision to reuse the Picos machines or buy new Picos machines from Smartmatic, despite the debacle that it suffered in the uh, Smartmatic case before the Supreme Court, which was a 15-0 decision, by the way. 15 all that. It now, was a 15-0 decision. While they are not running out or they're creating this debacle, as you put it, they're also running out of time. That's You're talking about 11 months, and 12 months today, and it's not like they have the whole 12 months. Maybe they will have about half of that, and basically the logistics is going to have to take over. Unless they will do the same thing and have Smartmatic run the whole election, and the Kamelec will sit back. My suspicion is that they will still insist on Smartmatic and insti insti uh, insist on using the PICOS. I hope they will not. That's my, that's my prayer, that they will not do such a thing. But information has been coming out that they might do the same in 2016. That's my biggest fear. However, watchdogs like Senpeg and Ace yes. Watch are watching the situation very intense, uh, intently and they will take action. Governor, kailangan pa ma mag-election tayo kung Smartmatic naman ibalik. What for, di ba? Sila naman mamimili kung sino mananalo, sino matatalo. Whether it's Smartmatic or manual, this is, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. an opinion. This is <laughs> not an advocacy. He, ladies and gentlemen, he qualifies. <laughs> yes. This. Because he has to qualify. Go ahead. <laughs> it is an analysis, not advocacy. Yeah. Let's make that clear. Because <laughs> Malacanang is waiting for me to commit a mistake. Uh, I know better. <laughs> okay. Smartmatic, we filed the case mm -mm. with the Supreme Court. Pero as, yung as early mo. as May 2010. Four and a half years ago, no, almost five years five ago. Five years, yes. The case was submitted only about, about four months ago. Submitted for decision. Until now, it remains with the Supreme Court still undecided. I was wondering whether the Supreme Court would like to do the same thing with our case against the impeachment of Corona. I was not mm -hmm. one of the lawyers of Corona, but as a citizen, I filed a case against in really the Senate, the House of Representatives, because they did not follow the Constitution. Okay. We filed it with the Supreme Court. I asked for four opportunities for our argument, all uh, denied. The Supreme Court decided the case after the Senate uh, impeached, uh, no, decided that Corona was guilty, and then Corona accepted the decision. After that, the Supreme Court said the case has become moot and academic. I hope it doesn't happen with this case of 2010 because the arguments are clear. The Comelec, in conspiracy with Smartmatic, in conspiracy with them, uh, stole the election. In effect, because they, had, they amended, if not totally disregarded, but five to six provisions of the automated election law. And it's very clear. That's very clear. Uh, very clear. But why are they getting away with it? Bakit kaya ng Supreme Court at ilabag ang napaka-obvious at sinasabi ng iba, tas gagawin lang muta na academic yan? Because in the words of Juan Ponce Enrile, who is now in sabbatical, 
in, in, <laughs> in, in the hospital. Uh, in really said at the time, the moment the Supreme Court will decide this case in favor of the petitioners, there's going to be a constitutional crisis. True, we will have no president. Uh, constitutional crisis. He will only be a de facto president, in effect, uh, impacto president. Impact to us, they say it in Cebuano terms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, that's likely to happen. I hope the Supreme Court makes a decision and says that the elections was invalid or if not, say that it's valid. I, I hate indecision. Yeah. Kailangan one and four. Firmity, di ba? Yeah. Yes or no? At panindigan mo uh, ko, no? Sinasabi constitutional mo. or unconstitutional? Pero kung matuloy ang smartmatic, it's tantamount to saying no L. Am I correct? Uh, useless eh. Yeah. So bakit? <laughs> kung ako, in the last 2013, tumakbo ako, tinumahan ako na 60, 30, 10. <laughs> you, you know, Harry, this is my analysis of the situation. The participants in the current struggle to have someone in the office of the presidency or to continue as president, what's happening in the Comelec now is uh, my suspicion is that Pinoy cannot choose a presidential candidate who will perpetuate his projects, his, ah. his plans. And since he cannot find one, he cannot find uh, Rojas, he appears non-electable. No? Oh, uh, Grace Poe is inexperienced. Uh, so, he let Comelec uh, <laughs> delay the whole process and ends up with Pinoy continuing as president. Pwede ba yun, Attorney Luna? Well, the law says that that cannot happen unless the situation is, is extraordinary, that it's taken out from the, from the normal. But we leave that to the Lima. He's very good in skirting the Constitution. No, the no. Lima. It, it, it will yeah, take. It will uh, take. OJ is very good at skirting the constitution. It will really take a radical <laughs> change in situation, extreme situation, for you to say that the elections cannot proceed. Yes. Because otherwise, we can kiss goodbye can we to call our that a strategy law. that is in the works today. Yeah, I I think so, because there are so many leftists in the group of Pinoy who is thinking outside the box. No, oh, the no. people who are thinking inside the box elections. But the one thinking outside the box uh, is no election. Why? Pinoy wants to perpetuate himself in power because if he does not perpetuate himself in power and somebody gets elected as president, if we go through with the elections mm -hmm. in a few months' time, he'll no, be in jail. Hawa. No, he'll be in he'll jail. Be in jail. Oh, in jail. He'll, be in jail. he'll be like uh, GMA and in relay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh. On the reverse. <laughs> okay, he'll be like that. So the thing that... Uh, they are entertaining now, no? the leftist elements. They must be, have been listening to me. <laughs> 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 I've been saying that the likely strategy to uh, avoid imprisonment and to perpetuate whatever program he has is to declare a constitutional transition government. How can that be done? Okay. Can be done. Extraordinary situation. No, That's an extraordinary uh, yeah, situation. Yeah, no situation. Section 1 and Section 3 of Article 2 of the Constitution. What do what do these provisions say? First, the Philippines is a republican and democratic state. Sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. He represents the people as president. So, okay, constitutional transition government. If not, section three of article two. Civilian authority is at all times supreme over the military. The military. Uh, that's, oh, that's, that's it. Then the exception is, comes next. No? The armed forces of the Philippines is the protector of the people and the state. But the, the commander in chief of the, the armed forces of the Philippines is Pinoy. Okay. So, so, so he wields that power. And defining the third statement is uh, the, its goal is to secure the sovereignty of the state and protect the integrity of the national territory. Well, I disagree with uh, Father Bernas. I don't know where uh, <laughs> he studied constitutional law, but in the <laughs> College of Law where he studied constitutional <laughs> law, he keeps on claiming that's extra-constitutional. He should take a seminar in English 
extra constitutional <laughs> mean outside the constitution. Outside, oh, this one is in the constitution, so it's not extra constitutional. It is extra constitutional when the extraordinary situation exists in the mind of Pinoy. Okay, we're going to have to take yeah. a short break. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ang tawag dito, semantics. Ano? Kasi pag abogado ka, magkakaintindihan kayo lahat. Ang problema, tayo ako, hindi ako abogado eh. Naliluto ako. Words and more words. Now, surely they can't break my bones, but they can break my country. Now, if you're on the side of Pinoy and you agree, no problem, right? What if you disagree and you feel bad for the poor and nothing's happening? But then again, we can always turn Chinese. We can all turn Muslim. <laughs> we can all start following the BBL and hail to Delima and the new constitution. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>